talking about stories so we were conversing and you know we were agreeing that when we were growing up some of the best stories that we used to hear from you know family people or grandparents or friends senior people would be the ghost stories <laughs> and uh, you know somehow you small you know kids we love to get scared still they want to hear that ghost story you know it's one of their favorite things you know amongst all stories do you have any ghost story from your experiences of <laughs> traveling in the mountains <laughs> wow <laughs> this is really getting him into trouble <laughs> see uh, the purpose of telling you ghost stories was not to scare you but uh, to give you a hair-rising experience. <laughs> this happened. In a barber shop in uh, Louisiana state, the whole place was filled with all kinds of horror comics and uh, ghost stories and all kinds of things, only that. No newspapers, no other magazines, only these things. So one day somebody asked the barber, said, why have you put your whole place with this kind of stories in your saloon? You not, don't have anything else, nothing about styles, about fashion, nothing, only ghost stories and horror stories, why? He said, see, for my profession, if somebody's hair is standing, it makes it much easier. <laughs> So the idea was to give you a hair-rising experience, <laughs> not to scare you. <laughs> and uh, I must tell you, this fascinated me so much that there was a man in Mysore city who was also working in the Mysore city corporation as some official, but he was known to be some kind of a ghost buster or tantric or whatever he is. So somebody told me, I was always looking for these kind of things. So somebody told me, this guy has trapped ghosts in bottles and kept it in his whatever, it's a shrine or a workshop or whatever you want to call it. So I want to go and that guy wouldn't allow us in initially but I was persistent and then he took me inside and he showed me lots of bottles. He said, in this there is this kind of a ghost, this is a woman, this is a man. I looked, I could not see a man or a woman, I all, all saw transparent bottles with corks. So I was just befriending him thinking, I will steal one bottle <laughs> because I really wanted to see a ghost because I had heard so many things. So many things means unbelievable kind of stories. Well, it only made me more and more curious. It did not raise my hair nor scare me, but I became more and more curious. I had spent months on end, continuously every night, being in the cremation grounds, wanting to see. So people come, burn the dead, and you know when with firewood, when the dead bodies burn, it burns for four, five, six hours. People stay there for an hour or hour and a half and then they have other business to do. They will cry and they'll weep and they will go when it's still burning. Normally what happens is, when as the fire burns, one thing because, you know, there's economic... Uh, always economic aspect to everything, if they've not put enough fire long enough, when this collapses, the out outer part, first thing that'll happen is because neck is such a small thing and it gets burnt and once the spine is burnt, the burning head will roll away, do-do-do-do-do. 
So I am the one who picks it up with a stick and puts it back and waits, where is the damn ghost? It doesn't come. Many, many months on end, I sat there, no ghost came. Somebody said, you put a nail in that tamarind tree, it will come. I would nail the damn tree again and again and again, nothing came. Somebody said, in this house there is a ghost. So I would beg them, please allow me, I want to stay, sleep in that house and see if the ghost comes, did not happen. So I went to this guy and when they said, specifically it's in the bottle, I wanted to steal a bottle. But he was very protective about his bottles <laughs> So I didn't see anything coming out, but he showed me one thing. He made an elaborate design with rice flour. In the five corners of this, he kept one one egg. He did all kinds of things and poof, he clapped his hand, pop! All the five eggs burst right in front of my eyes. So, I thought, something. I don't know whether it's a ghost or it's a thing, whatever, but definitely he did not reach out to these five, he was standing away and all the five eggs burst. Then uh, this was working on me and I went, I was walking in my house backyard, looking here and there. Then I saw guavas were hanging in the tree, the guava fruit. I looked at the fruit, the fruit fell. I thought, what? I did it again and again, the fruit fell. Then I brought my friends and just, you idiots, watch this <laughs> Talk, fruit fell. They said, what? Not once, five, ten times I did so that it's not an accident. But then, in about three days' time after I did this, a revulsion, I've never experienced it ever in my life because I've never stepped into those areas. A kind of revulsion went through my entire body that I knew that I had done something very fundamentally wrong. Never again. I said, you want the guavas? Go up and get it. <laughs> you want anything in your life? Go and get it. These kind of things we will never again do. So, I realized something is fundamentally wrong, use your energies like that. So what is a ghost? All of you are ghosts with a body. Those who are walking and sitting, everybody, you are ghosts with a body. But suddenly somebody lost their body and you think they are something horrible. Why? They're just like you, they just lost the body. Is it true that you gathered the body over a period of time? Suppose, let's say you had lost control over how much you eat and you became this big and then you came to yoga program and whatever and slowly you shrank into half your size. Does it mean to say half of you has become a ghost? <laughs> Hello? So if somebody lost the body, fifty, sixty kilograms of planet that we have picked up and made into this, if they put it back, is that a ghost? Then you are also a ghost with a body, isn't it? So this abnormal way of looking at life, that just because somebody lost their body, they've become something evil, something fear… fearful, something terrible, is a very abnormal way of looking at life. The nature of life is such that whether… see right now, there's something you must look at this, not intellectually, really experientially. You're breathing, all of you, are you? Hello? I'm just checking. Hello? You're breathing. So if you're breathing, let us say this was like a building or whatever, right now we are in the quadrangle kind of place. So there is life here that you're breathing. You may call it air, but it's actually life. Because if I take away this, this will go. Yes? Your life will go. It's only in this transaction, life is happening, isn't it? So it's not just about air, oxygen, this, that. This is a living cosmos. You are like a little bubble, you captured a little bit of life. You know, you, did you blow soap bubbles when you were young at least? <laughs> so when you blew your soap bubble, you got this big bubble, I got that big bubble, let us say. 
we were looking at this, oh, this is my bubble, this is your bubble, then they went poop. When they go poop, you don't say, this is my air, this is your air, isn't it? This is just like that, this is just a bubble. You captured a certain amount of life and it's functioning in a certain way. When this bubble bursts, there's no such thing as your life and my life. Well, you may not break the entire bubble, you may break the outer surface of the bubble and the inner surface of the bubble may still remain just because the outer peel has drop, dropped off. Do you call that a ghost? Then you are a ghost with a body. <laughs>